Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we try to make sense of the Arizona real estate market, and it's not getting any easier, my friends. <laughs> Holy cow. I uh, got a comment right off the bat here from Kellogg Root saying, Morning, Rick. I see that Evergrande suspended trading of its shares. Let the fun begin. So for those of you that don't know, Evergrande is China's largest developer building cities, literally building cities that nobody even moves to. Lo and behold, they're having a cash flow problem. And construction in China makes up 25% of their gross domestic product. So if that segment gets in trouble, China's whole financial system gets in trouble. If China's, China's financial system gets in trouble, we get in trouble. So this is something to be watched closely. Not only is Evergrande having a problem, but there's another, their second largest developer is having issues. And there was speculation that China would just take it over, but they don't want it. And uh, they owed us a November bond payment. I think it was about $440 million in November, and they weren't able to make the payment. So this could be a contagion, and it just uh, it warrants being watched. So we'll watch that. I'm bringing Sam DeGreen on from DeGreen Wealth Management next week, and you can bet we're going to talk about that. But today, today in Arizona... I'm going to turn my mic down a little hot there. 5,701 listings. That is it, my friends. But we expected this as we get into the new year. I mean, people just sitting on their hands. Uh, the virus is not making it any easier. So we are sitting here with 5,701 homes. And what we had was in the past seven days. So I track seven-day moving average. And we have 2,444 new listings that came on. And 2,407 of those went under contract. What I find interesting is the gap between the new listings that come on and the ones that go under contract always just runs parallel with each other, very close. The farthest they ever get apart is maybe 400 homes. So it's as if there's 3,000 homes out there. Nobody simply, they don't want them. So when the new listings come up, they grab them. The other one, nah, I've seen those. I'm just going to leave those on the shelf. And it consistently follows that same pattern. You can see here, this is uh, uh, in the summertime. So the gap grew a little bit here, right? So it's about 400 units. But then we just continue to follow closely, especially when we get into the holidays. People sit back, wait, there's a new listing that comes up. I'll take it. Well, what about these three? I don't want them. So it's an interesting, interesting market to watch. So what can we expect now? We've seen that there's a lot of chatter about mortgage rates going up. Uh, we're not seeing that yet. Let's see here. We've got 3.27% today. And it was on the year we went from a low of 2.75 to a high of 3.45. Now, Realtor.com and CoreLogic are both predicting that we're probably going to be about 3.5 by the end of the year. But guess what? We were already there. We already got up to 3.45. So that's not going to be an alarming number. Are we going to get it four? That remains to be seen. So if we look at the treasury market right here, this is a 10-year treasury. You know, there's talk of inflation. We, are in, we have an inflationary period right now, but the market does not believe it's going to stay with us. And the, you can see that in this 10-year uh, treasury. Basically, the traders are saying, well, yeah, we have inflation, but we don't think it's going to stick around for a long time. Therefore, we don't think the Fed's going to raise rates as tight as everybody's saying that they are. Now, they can change their mind in a New York minute, but for now, they're not playing in that sandbox. Pending sales fall, and they didn't really fall that much, and they did not fall very much in Phoenix. They fell 2.2% compared to October, and we're down 2.7% from November. And that is a national number from the National Association of Realtors. And they said that sales jumped 7.5% in October rather than the fractional increase expected. But it says here, wait, pending sales fell. Well, in November, they came back down again. So um, basically, here's what he's saying. He's saying that because people were fearing that rates were going up, remember I talked about that in a couple of videos back, and because of... Um, um, the exasperation of inventory, you know, people just said, I got to go out and get something now. So I'm going to jump in before rates come up. And that is what they did. Um, so, whoops, I got something going here on the background and it's, it's a commercial. Cromford Index, one of my favorite things to look at. 
This is not the index, but this is our inventory. You can see that we're actually below last year. I didn't think that would happen when I saw inventory going up here in the summertime, like August. I thought we would eclipse this, go right past it, and start gradually heading towards a balanced market. Ain't happening. Here is an interesting thing that shows the market index as a predictor of price increases. Now, the Crawford Market Index is a proprietary number, and they use it to come up with an index with 100 being a balanced market. We haven't been in 100 for a long, long time. In fact, last time we were there was back here in March of 2014. So there's what your balanced market looks like right there. See how price is barely going along? But take a look here before the crash. Right here, the Cromford Market Index was going up, and it went all the way up to 312. That means that prices are going up. That means we were in short supply. This was in 2004, and sure enough, prices started going up. But then look, the index started coming down, predicting that prices were going to soften. And sure enough, they not only softened, but they crashed like a rock here. The index got all the way down to 27. Put that in comparison to where we're at now, and the index is at 346. So we see and saw a little dip coming up here. And that was right around, it doesn't give me my month. This is August. We started seeing things starting to go in favor of buyers. Still had a long way to go. We're sitting there at uh, 600 at one point. So we had a peak of 511. It was actually 541. Started coming down. And we thought, okay, we're getting closer closer to this balanced market but now look we've turned again we've turned again be simply because there is not enough inventory the summary of the market condition shows this this is accepted contracts now this is see that big long dip there well that's the number that i just showed you which is you know the holidays so this is december december 10th december 26th not a whole lot of buying going on and there wasn't any last year this is an interesting one below here though and it shows you that the median agent days on market, and I'm going to explain what that is, accepted contracts is starting to creep up a little bit. Again, holiday, holiday. So this Thanksgiving, this Christmas, we're up to, I'm going to say, an average of 10. And then it blipped to 13, and then for the holiday week, it came up to 17. So what is average agent days on market? Well, we see average days on market averages between 30 and 42 days. Well, that's because it goes under contract and then you wait for the inspection period, uh, uh, the financing and everything, and then it closes. Agent days on market is here I've listed a house. Oh, look, it went under contract. On average, the homes in Arizona are going under contract in 13 days. That's the average. So if your home's been on the market for two weeks, you're priced wrong. So those homes that nobody wants, where I'm saying we're getting 2,000 going under contract, but there's about 3,000 they're leaving on the, on the plate, they're just simply overpriced. The price per square foot continues to go up, and it will uh, as long as we're in short supply. This is the average list price per square foot at contract acceptance. So it's showing here that we're at 273.50, so the prices are continuing to climb. And as long as we're in short supply, we're going to see that. Now, there's a lot of chatter about um, the increase is only going to be around 7% next year. Who knows? Every one of them that predicted our increases for 2021 were wrong. Nobody had a good number, so I'm not about to try it. Do Vegas says, the new normal will stay below 20,000 homes for sale in Phoenix unless we run out of water. I agree on both, both comments there, Vegas. Um, yeah, water's... Water's a problem. Here's here's an interesting thing coming up here, too, is speaking of water, uh, D.R. Horton bought this whole green spot right here, and they bought it. Uh, they bought a, a first chunk of Superstition Vistas parcel for $245 million. And who did they buy it from? They bought it from state land benefits. So that money goes to public schools. But it's interesting. They don't have to finish this development until the year... 2045 they have 25 years 2045 to get this developed and even though dr horton bought all this um they'll they'll parcel it up and sell it to different builders 
So they're not going to be the ones building all the homes. So they just secured the land. They'll build as much as they can out there and develop it. So they're going to put in, you know, the sewer, the water, the electricity. And then when they sell it, they're going to be giving 50% of the profits back to the state, which is interesting. So they secured the right to develop this. It's a huge parcel. How many homes are they talking about here? It was 2,783 acres. And I'm not sure how many homes they say they're going to put on it, but I think it was somewhere around 3,000. Um, I don't see it in this article, but could be way more than that. Where's the water coming from? I don't know. That's the ongoing question here in Arizona, and it's going to be a tough one to watch. But let's stay very close to this Evergrande situation. Inventory should be climbing this week on the seven-day moving average, but it as long as we've got um, the medical situation ramping you know raging like it is right now I, I don't expect that to go up very fast i think we're going to be stuck here for a while and sp speaking of being stuck aren't you glad you're not flying and if you are flying um good luck uh, so many airlines are canceling right now my son is supposed to fly to portland in a couple days and i said don't go to the airport until you know for sure that plane is still scheduled so it's going to be a tough time out there and i think it's going to be a rough month so we just need to get through it and we'll probably be looking at February to see if we see any new trends. So have a great day and take on the week. Mm -hmm.